obviously a huge story developing in Australian football with Ange potentially going to Tottenham Hotspur. Um, you had some great battles with him in the A-League over the years. Um, I didn't win many. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, did you think back then that his football was capable of reaching the heights it is now? And also, how do you think he's going to go in this job if he takes it? Mentally, uh, probably years ago, and I worked as his, as his assistant in two, uh, 2002, I think it was, at the Under-20 World Cup in Dubai. And uh, just from working with him there, I could see the, the, the obsession... I think that's the right word, obsession of football. That is, he's just totally obsessed with the game and it's his life. And uh, <clears throat> always knew that he, was, he had that mentality of where he wanted to go. And that was to the top. Um, you know, you have obviously have a few setbacks, but that's what makes coaching. That's coaching. It's, uh, you know, you, you learn from those type of, th- uh, not mistakes, but those type of setbacks. And... Ange has always been someone that uh, is always so determined to to prove the doubt is wrong. And uh, I think that's, uh, in a lot of ways, his motivation. And, uh, like, I, I just, I'm, I'm just so happy for him, honestly. It makes uh, me and Ange are mates, but we were competitors against each other. And uh, but to see him doing what he's doing is just brilliant. And uh, <clears throat> not only for himself, and but he's... I think one of the greatest photos he'll ever see is with his wife, Georgia, and the kids after the FA Cup final on the pitch with a trophy. And those type of moments and memories are the ones that will stick with him and his family forever. But, uh, you know, going to Tottenham, I think it's a great job for him. And I think uh, he'll kill it. Um, just to follow up on that, I mean, there's him, there's Kevin Musket in Yokohama. Michael Valkanis has just taken a job uh, in Israel. Uh, Joe Montemuro in, in the women's game. You just got a big rap recently from Lionel Scaloni. I mean, what does all this say about... It might not be that bad, eh? Yeah. <laughs> well, you're going all right. What does all this say about uh, not only the quality of Australian coaches, but maybe the perception of Australian coaches in Australia versus overseas? Because yeah. it seems like overseas is waking up to the fact that we've got some good managers here. Well, I think that one of the hardest things to do, and I spoke to when we played Chelsea with Sydney FC and Jose Mourinho come out with Chelsea, and he asked how the salary cap worked. And I said to him, and he, at the time, he said, how much is it? And I, was, I think it was about $2.1 million. And he was like, oh, how can you coach with that? You know, because <clears throat> when you don't have the money, you've got to find... I think one of the, Ange's huge strengths is recruitment and his attention to detail with recruitment and the players that he gets to find for his way, his, uh, the, way uh, the system and the way he wants, wants it played. And, uh, you know, we've got, a, we've got a hard way of... You know, to, uh, for coaching here in Australia, there's only basically 12 jobs that are in professional, plus obviously the national team. So it's a hard gig. And a lot of times, you know, I spend most of my uh, back end of my playing career overseas. And, you know, a lot of my mindset is I want to help Australian kids. But uh, with a lot of the younger coaches, and I'm bringing Wolfie Tallow into this camp to give him a, an opportunity to experience. He's, he's, he's not staying. He's got to go coach. You know, and uh, we've got some good, great young coaches in in, uh, in the A League, and, and as you said, Vince overseas, and Kevin Musket's doing fantastic, and these guys will end up overseas. And Ange is uh, the leader of that pathway. You know, it's like all those years ago in, in playing with Craig Johnson, the first real Australian to go overseas, and he led the pathways for myself and Krencevich, Mitchell, Slater, and Farina. And you need someone to open the eyes of people who are in. <clears throat> around the world to, to say, oh, geez, so well, the Australian coaches might not be so bad. And Ange's An- An- doing that and has done that fantastically well for all of us. We'll get to Tom and then we'll finish with Daniel. That's all right. Uh, uh, That's just on that, man. Can you sort of detail, you know a lot about obviously the big dad world of coaching, how incredible an achievement it is from Ange to go from somebody who doesn't have a playing career in Europe, who doesn't have the brand over there, to go from where he was to where he will be probably tonight our time. How incredible an achievement is that to do? Yeah, it's, it's his obsession, Daniel. As I said, like he would sit and watch football all day. I'm not like that. <laughs> I can't watch it all day, but <clears throat> he's obsessed with, with his career in a lot of ways, his family and his, and, and his job. And, you know, the time I, I just saying, when I went to Celtic and... and you know, for the day or two, and he was just full on 
all day. And, uh, you know, look, I think one of the specialties with Ange is a lot of the managers are managers. They're not coaches as well. And I think that's what Ange has the, the, the dual role of, of being a coach as well as a manager. That uh, on the tactical side of things and everything, he's not relying on other people to tell him what to do and that because he's got that now. And then on the manager, managerial side, but he knows man management. He knows how to get the best out of people and motivate people where sometimes a lot of managers leave it, leave the coaching to someone else to do and they're playing that way of that other coach. Where with Ange, I said, it's, it's, it's his way. And, uh, and look at it. It's, it's, it's fantastic. And why even as an Australian, you've been able to, to change those perceptions and win all of them over who may have been very ignorant about... Well, look at the way he played with Brisbane. Look at the way he played earlier on, you know. Uh, I think he finished his career early with a knee injury and he had the, the, the luxury at that time, young, working with Frank Arrock and Puskas. So he's learnt from two very experienced European uh, coaches straight away. But I say this in, <clears throat> in a way also with the, the playing side of it, and I say that, you know, the A-League the a has got the quality. I have to watch a lot of the other leagues and the other our players play in other leagues, and it's not much of a difference as standard. And because we're coaching in, as I said, with a salary cap system, we've got to do a lot more work and a lot harder work and work, you know, focus on the tactical side and all that stuff more than ever. But, you know, Ange has always been extremely motivated to do it his way, and, and that's worked. It's working well.